workshop meeting of the Lake Como Mayor and Council to order. Uh, we have two items on our workshop agenda. And our first item, um, I will introduce Mr. Robert Bryce from JCPNL, who's going to talk a little bit about the smart meter uh, installation that I brought up a couple meetings ago in my report. Sir. Thank you, Mayor. No way. Uh, council members, thank you uh, for a couple minutes here. Uh, I want to introduce myself. I'm the new external affairs representative for JCPNL First Energy. I, did my ticket pick up on this old? Good. There. Uh, I have a history uh, in the area. I was the retired police chief of Wall Township. I have a great working relationship with uh, Mr. Heisman. Uh, we've already solved a couple problems in town. Uh, it's a great relationship. You don't pick up the phone anytime and have you know the number on the other side. You know who you're talking to. So we fixed a couple things. I look forward to fixing a couple other things. Um, with uh, the one project I want to speak to you about tonight, it is the advanced metering system, <coughs> otherwise known as the smart meter system that we have coming forward. Uh, Lake Como is actually in phase one out of the Allenhurst meter station. Um, we are starting this month with the installations up probably around the Long Branch area is going to be first. Probably be here sometime <coughs> in the summer. I will give you a heads up uh, before you get here. Additionally, the residents will receive a brochure about four to six weeks out from the time that they're scheduled to be uh, have installed their house and then they'll receive a letter two to four weeks out. It gives them some information about uh, what the system is. It also gives them an opt-out uh, information should they choose to opt out of the, uh, the program. What is the benefit of the program? The benefit of the program is for the company. Uh, we don't have to send a meter reader out. Uh, the meters can be automatically read from an office. Uh, it, we don't even have to drive by like uh, some other utilities do. It'll be automatically sent through a system of routers back to our, uh, our, our offices and controlled through there. Um, the other benefit, currently for us to be aware of an outage, we have to be notified by either the town, the police department, or the individual resident. Uh, we don't know if an individual house is out. We'll know if a substation is out. We'll know if a transmission line is out. But we don't know if individual houses are out. This will let us know that. So this will let us know instantaneously when a house is out. And on the other end of it, when a house is restored as well. As you all know from big, some of the bigger storms, Sandy, Irene, one of the bigger issues was figuring out who was restored and when everybody was restored. What that entails is actually sending people out on foot to kind of confirm who's restored by the end of that. You don't have to do that anymore. So that's a big benefit. For the residents, the benefit is they're going to have all the information of all their usage at their hand. So now they're going to be able to figure out when their air conditioning is running the most, when uh, there are other appliances running the most, and why this is going to be important is what's coming up in the future. It looks like there's a big push toward everybody to get electric vehicles. Additionally, there's a big push for everybody to convert a lot of appliances back to electric. You're going to need to know when you're running these systems uh, so that you're not running everything at peak hours between the hours of four and six. So you're gonna to wanna to know when you have the opportunity to schedule charges for your vehicles, charges for other appliances. And that'll help you out with that as well. Um, as far as the actual program, again, like I said, probably in the summer, you'll, you'll be uh, notified of that when you, you're gonna get it. The opt-out option I spoke about, if a resident should not wanna have it installed in their home, they can opt out. It would be a $15 a month uh, reading fee, though, to, to have a person come out and read the meter. And additionally, if the meter is installed already, the new meter, there's a $44.46 charge to have it removed. Now, again, you're going to want to try to get it before you, you get the meter installed, opt out of it, but there already are some meters installed. Since December of 2020, if a meter was broken or if it was a new construction, we've been installing the meters that are capable of being part of the system. So the smart meters are out there, they're just not acting smart right now. The reason, how you could tell you have a smart meter is it's digital and it has a blue stripe on it. Those are the smart, those are the smart capable meters. They're not smart meters until they're all hooked into this, uh, the system and the routers are up and the whole system is uh, up and running. So even when this summer we come in and make those installations, they're not smart yet until the whole system is up and running. Um, I'm available for any questions that come up. 
I will give the clerk uh, a link to our website. Uh, there is a nice page set up specifically for this. It addresses uh, any questions that residents may have, particularly those concerning uh, health issues, security issues, anything related to the system will be addressed on there. So I'll, I'll give that to the clerk and she can uh, have that link available for you. Do you have any questions? Does the residents have to be home to put the new meter in? Nope, thank you for asking that. They don't. What will happen is, again, they get the, those two cards, uh, the brochure four to six weeks out, the letter two to four weeks, and then when it's actually installed, they leave a, uh, a, a door hanger letting you know that it was performed already. Other than that, the people probably wouldn't know other than the clock's blinking because it is going to be a power disconnect for probably 15, 20 minutes while it's installed. Can you make an appointment <coughs> if you have a pet or something that you want to make sure is not out in your backyard? Um, no, but they're, they're just like our meter readers. They're going to make sure that they knock oh, on they're the door. They're not going to come in. They're, they're no, going to no, knock no. on the door first. Yeah, they're just not going to go to the back. They're going to, we have all that stuff on uh, file anyway. When they come read meters right now, they know where the dogs are out. They know all that stuff. So it's the same file they're going to be using. So they'll know to, to make contact with you before they go in the back door. You said there's a cost for $15 per month for reading and forty-four forty-six dollars charged to remove it. Is yes. there a cost to install it to the residents? No, it's built in. Okay. And does this get installed when the resident gets the notification if they do nothing? In other words, they get the notice and they just don't do anything, they does it. Correct. The only way uh, they would have to respond is if they want to opt out. Correct. Okay. How long is typical for the whole process taking place at a, um, a resident's house? Probably about 15 minutes, 15 Oh, that's minutes. the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, there are some houses, there's <coughs> probably a very small percentage of houses, and we don't know which ones they are until you get there. That we're estimating there may be a problem with the plugs. Uh, through the older meter bands. At that point, they're probably going to back out, leave the old meter, and then make arrangements to have the new meter pan upgraded. Uh, but they won't leave the people without electric. Okay. They won't get there, take the old meter out, and go, yep. <laughs> now we got to get from the new meter. I have a couple questions. Yes, if you don't know the answer, I'm, I'm not putting you on the spot. These no. are just things that were coming to my mind. Um, you said you're starting in Long Branch? Yes. Is it, are you hitting every town on the way down? Are <laughs> so they are spreading out. We're using a firm, Wellington, uh, third party. They are increasing the amount of people. Technically, the, the, the installations are going to start the 15th of March. Yes, March. There's going to be a small area up that wire just for like a beta test type of area to see how it goes. But then they're going to increase the amount of uh, uh, crews out there. So they're so, going to do like it would be Belmar, Lake Como, so Spring yeah. Lake, all at the same time kind yeah. of thing. So they could have a crew hitting, let's just say, for argument's sake, Asbury, Allenhurst, and uh, Ocean Grove in one day, okay. and then having the crew down here as well. Okay. Uh, the routers um, that mm -hmm. will the routers are going to be placed on the telephone poles that already exist and owned by JCP now. Yes. So there's two things: there's the routers, and then there's the range extenders. Uh, the routers are a small white box, a little bit bigger than a shoebox uh, with two antennas sticking out of it. Uh, they are the poles owned by us. If they're not owned by us, there's arrangements made with uh, Verizon uh, to share the pole. But most likely, there are poles because they have much electrical equipment on it. So. Do you know what future there are, if there are future capabilities for those routers? For instance, if there were uh, another group or another organization that wanted to piggyback on those routers, would they be able to do that sometime in the future? No. The only future application for that could be what we hope to, um, in a few years, I don't want to get everybody's hopes up. We want to get the houses up first, but we'll also use this to report streetlights out. Uh, we're beta testing certain areas out in other First Energy uh, operating companies out in Pennsylvania uh, where they're using this to monitor streetlights. So that would be the only other application for those routers is to do a streetlight monitor. And will, will there still be availability for residents to call for power outages, or is that kind of going to go by the wayside? There will, yeah. but most likely they'll, um, it'll already be notified. Uh, what we're hoping is if the residents even have their information on file, you're going to get a, you'll be out, let's say, to dinner, and you're getting a text, your power's out. Or if you're at home and your power's out, you're getting a text, your power's out. 
Uh, but that's no kidding. That's how, we, <laughs> that's how we hope the system works. Um, and just finally, if a resident already has the quote unquote smart meter installed, mm -hmm. do they have to look on their own or will they be noticed that they already have it and they won't be installed? They'll be noticed they already have it. out of this before? So the, all the other first energy operating companies have it up and running already. A uh, very small percentage, I say, opt out. I think less than 2% is the thing. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out why someone would opt out. Have you heard, what have you heard? Uh, there, not to like. Well, no, there are concerns of, it, it runs on radio frequencies. Mm -hmm. uh, just like our cell phones, our microwaves, uh, our remote controls, our controls for the garage doors. It runs on that. Um, I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you what degree, but it is a safe level as deemed by the FCC. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't be uh, deployed. That's what uh, a lot of people are concerned about. The actual meter, though, it transmits uh, a couple seconds an hour to get the information back. It's not a lot of information it has to send, so it's not like it's constantly sending information back. Um, you know, the thing with any type of exposure is <clears throat> the, the three things you're looking for are time, distance, and shielding. So you're shielded by your house. Unless you go out and sit and stare at your meter, that's the most direct contact you're going to have. But I think even if you stare at your meter for 24 hours a day, because it only goes a couple seconds an hour, you're not going to really get a lot of uh, some exposure. <laughs> so the cost for operating the meter, who's paying that? Is the homeowner paying that? So all costs uh, through our company are, are through the BPU, through the tariff. So this was a tariff case that we made going back to uh, 2020. So it'll be part of all First Energy JCPL uh, rate payers are socializing the costs. So the 1.1 million meters that we're putting out there, all First Energy customers are paying the portion of that to include the installation and uh, is that the question you asked? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so are you paying for it even if you opt out? Yes, all rate payers do pay. I, I, I just want to say this: a house I own in Florida has this system in place, and it's a, it's really amazing. The, the, uh, when they had the hurricane down there, you know, it went out, and when two months later, when everything got back up and running again. Mm -hmm. It came right back on. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So if I just say, it is amazing. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Yeah. A lot of people assume right now we have this capability. Because a lot of people, oh, do you know where the power outage is? We don't even know about the power outage. I'm going to call two minutes after the lights go out here. And guess what? We, we barely know about it. Yeah. We sure don't have a truck out here by then. What it's going to do is going to make us at that level where when you call me up, I'll be able to start looking maybe not within two minutes, but a relatively short amount of time and tell you, yeah. This area of town is out. Your whole town is out. You and all of are out. It's basic so, though. One like that out of Florida, it just says your power's out. Yeah. Is you know the biggest complaint when I was a police officer. Mm -hmm. You get you know all of a sudden you start getting inundated at the police desk about calls. Mm -hmm. And you know most of the time it was a transformer fire yeah. or it's a car accident and mm -hmm. a pole or so on and so forth. Does this have capabilities of sending out a like? Uh, a message on why? So not to not to you, but to us it will. Our crews, so now by the time the crews are, are getting into their trucks, they're going to be able to tell that it's basically everything going through a certain transformer or everything going through a certain substation and then narrow down that transformer, that substation, or that circuit is the issue. So they'll be able to narrow that down. And then I'll be able to communicate that with you, the elected officials. Great. I have a question about yes. future applications. So you were saying that with smart cars and potential electric, would there be some sort of an app in the future that would allow you to schedule when you were going to charge your car if you were to do it that way? Yeah, I think that's where this is all going toward, to be able to okay. get that capability. Okay. So you know when your, your right. peak hours are, uh, right. narrow down to what, uh, you know, what the cause is. Right. So. I'm excited to hear that um, you can Tell when street lights are out because I, I haven't gone for a walk around here in not yet. at dark at, in, at nighttime in a long time, but it's it is, it's very dark around here. Right. We have so many street lights out, and again, this could be from a couple of years ago, but okay. it'd be great to be.
split up again and feel safe. Yeah, I spoke to the administrator. We're working on a couple of those. I'm actually going over and checking one location at the meeting. Okay. Talk about, so. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, the second item on our agenda is the discussion on New Jersey cannabis law and the municipalities' roles and options. Um, just as a reminder for the council and the public, um, which, which I'm sure we'll talk about too, we passed an ordinance in 2021 um, that uh, banning. banning, it bans all recreational marijuana, et cetera, et cetera, in the borough of Lake Como. Um, so, uh, we have been getting some questions on cannabis in Lake Coma, and we've asked our attorney just to give us a little bit of an education on where we are, what the possibilities are. Um, we have no intention of passing anything tonight. We have no resolutions or ordinances on our, build, on our agenda to change anything. Um, this is strictly educational. Um, so with that, I think everybody had homework the last meeting. Nick, to do your homework. <laughs> All right. You're asking an international expert in drug prevention. That's true. <laughs> okay. Hey. Is everybody, yeah, so, uh, good evening. So, I uh, full disclosure before I uh, start talking about where where the state is at and where Lycoma is at, I do represent several cannabis companies, some grow companies, some retail companies. So, to the extent that this town None of them in Monmouth County, by the way, but to the extent that this town were to decide to allow any kind of cannabis establishment in this borough, I would not be involved. I would step aside clearly. Um, so that, and I'm also not making a recommendation one way or the other to the council. Um, but several years ago, the state of New Jersey um, legalized medical marijuana. And there's been a lot of studies done, the extent to which it's beneficial to certain uh, parts of our society, some age, aged per people, people my age, people with disabilities, etc. Uh, a couple of years ago, they legalized recreational cannabis, and that's the topic for tonight's workshop. Um, when they legalized it, they were very careful to say that it's up to the towns. So the towns get a, a whole bunch of say-so. They get to say-so at the beginning, the middle, and the end. And when a town, if a town decides, and again, in, in uh, August of 2021, Lake Como decided to do what many, many towns did and simply banned it anywhere in the town. And the effect of that is that no cannabis establishment can open up here. However, cannabis can still be delivered by delivery companies who are licensed in other jurisdictions. You can't prevent those companies from coming into your town and delivering cannabis to residents who have requested it. But beyond that, right now in, in Lake Como, no cannabis establishment, no retail, no grow, no manufacture, can, can, uh, or no delivery can, can be headquartered in Lake Como. If the town were to look into it and decide that they wanted to move forward, they have lots of choices. They could say, we want one micro establishment, micro being a small, um, limited in terms of space, limited in terms of quantity, limited in terms of who can apply for a micro license, they could decide to have one micro, one retail. They could decide to have only a grow facility, only a delivery facility, only a manufacturer facility. They could also say only in this location in town, only if the person or, uh, uh, or, or entity who uh, comes into the town and gets licensed in this town, if they hire people from the town. They also can restrict the hours, they can restrict the days, they can restrict the number of parking spaces, all the zoning sorts of things. So that, for example, you could say, there's a two block area in this town where we will permit a micro or a retail or a, uh, a, a growth, well, you're not gonna do a grow facility probably in Lake Como unless, unless we knock down a whole bunch of buildings across the street and made it into a farm. So the likelihood of that is probably pretty slim. Some of the Towns with large warehouse areas, they're trying to get rid of their warehouses, they will put a grow facility in those municipalities. So I said you get to weigh it at the beginning, the middle, and the end. In order for a, an entity or an individual to even get licensed, they have to get a resolution from the council. So step number one would be to say, we will allow one, two, or one, one micro, one retail, whatever you decide, or whatever the, the council decides, obviously. Um, 
the entity who wanted to get licensed by the state to, to come into Lake Como would then need a resolution of council. And council could also set up some, some parameters. They could set up a licensing process where they require the person to apply, explain how they're going to educate the populace, what they're going to do from security, what they're going to do about parking, what they're going to do about all the things that a municipality might care about in order to get a municipal license. They can't get a state license without a municipal license. And then if more than one person or entity were to apply for a license in this, in this municipality, the, the state comes back to the town and says, which of these two do you want? Or if you say you're allowing two and four people apply, they come back and say, which of these four do you want? There's a lot of, a lot of discretion on the part of the municipality to decide what they want, who they want, why they want it, where they want it, et cetera. Um, they also, at what the very end, then there's also the, they have to comply with whatever zoning you set up. And of course, you always you always have the right to so the council, of course, the town has the right to say no, thank you. We've looked at it again. We still don't want to do it. There's one in Neptune. If our people want to go buy weed or buy something, they can go buy it in Neptune. Um, the other thing you should know, and the council should know, is that studies have been done as to the impact on driving impact on impact on the economy you do if you decide to do it you get two percent you can charge up to two percent of gross sales now in in a lot of in some of the predictions that have been have been um, bandied around would could bring in a couple hundred thousand dollars a year and to a town like Lake Como that could be pretty significant uh, but that's obviously again something for the council to decide something for the residents to weigh in on um, there have been studies done as to whether or not youth usage of medical marijuana or of, of recreational marijuana is increased when you bring it into the community. Studies have shown that it, there's not a statistical impact one way or the other. It doesn't help and it doesn't hurt. According to, again, I'm, I've studied the area. I've seen studies. I'm not telling you what to make, what decision to make for your community. Obviously, you make that based on what you think is, is the right thing to do. Um, there's also been some studies on property values there's at least one study that indicates property values go up, but again, not dramatically. Um, but they don't go down because there's a cannabis facility. And probably the reason they go up is some basic economic thing, like if your taxes, if you're gonna generate income, significant income in the municipality, then your taxes are probably gonna be stabilized or go down. So that would increase your property values. But that said, again, that's, I can answer, I'm not going to answer legal questions for the audience. I will answer, answer factual questions or any questions about what I've said. If the council has any additional questions, I've already provided them with a memo telling them what their, what their roles are. And if they have additional questions after they hear from the public, um, I'll be happy to deal with them. Um, no, just real quick. Um, can you just, I missed a little bit about the licensing when you said there has to be a municipal and state. Did you say there was two parts to that? Or there that's, up, that's up to you. There is a state license, but you can also require a municipal license. Okay. I can open it to Count, Nick, you wanna go? Yeah, uh, Peg. You're on. Oh, no. Now you're on. Now you're on. Now you're on. Okay. <clears throat> no disrespect to the information you got, but I have information different that shows an increase in drug use with youth and, and cannabis use, and uh, I really don't want to get into a debate with it at this point, but I will be prepared to make it an issue if we move forward. Thank you. Peg, I thought it was really interesting when you said education. You're talking about education, education to whom? Um, the community or um, whatever, whatever the council wants. Yeah, the so council can well. actually ask any applicant again once you take the first step which is to say you're going to permit it you can as part of your licensing process you can ask them to explain what they're going to do to educate the the, the uh, citizenry and or the schools okay. I have a question. in addition to the two percent tax can the borough also charge um, any licensing fees or any other fees yes um, they can charge a reasonable licensing fee what any uh, guidelines <laughs> as to what's considered? Well, you know, I can tell license. you there are some towns that have got charged as much, usually the, the inner cities have charged as much as $20,000 for a dispensary on an annual basis. Um, reasonable is really a question of what kind of paperwork's involved, what kind of, you're also going to have to do due diligence if 
You are going to have a licensing process. There are going to be people in the community who will be on your cannabis review committee if you set one up. Again, there's a lot of opportunities for that. So it's a question of if you do all of those things and you require licensing and you set up a review committee, the cost will be significantly greater than if you just have an application for the clerk to fill out. And as far as the location goes, is that completely up to the borough or are there any state regulations such as it can't be within a certain distance of the school, for example? It's totally up to the borough now. It used to be restricted by the state, but not anymore. If you uh, gave permission and then you realize maybe two years later down the line you want to get rid of it, can you do that? You could also set up an annual licensing process so that every year you're going to renew the license or review the license like you do with an ABC license. So obviously Lake Como is a small town and um, I would be curious to know more about other small towns that have decided to move forward with this. Research that. We can we can look into it. I do know I know that Mount Holly. I don't know how big Mount Holly is. That strikes me as a small town. Has has said okay to it. I believe Red Bank is looking into it and is going to do it. Asbury has done it. Towns as small as Lake Como. I'm I. There was at least one. Yes, Millstone in Somerset County is is looking to do it. They haven't done it yet, but they're looking to. It. That's probably even smaller than Lake Como. But they want to have, they want to, it's impossible. impossible. No, it's, <laughs> but I tell you how many people they had. Um, they, um, yeah, they, they've decided if they're going to do it, they're going to allow only one retail. They haven't even decided yet whether they're going to do one retail or one micro retail. Sorry for this, but what's the difference between the two? <laughs> I was afraid, I'm not sure I can tell you. It has to do with the, um, the quantity of, the size of the, size of the establishment, the quantity you're going to sell, I can certainly get you that information if uh, the borough wants to go forward with that. Can we restrict in terms of how many people can be in the store at a time? So we do have limited parking, especially in the summer. Um, in terms of can we require them to make appointments to come in? Or is it, what is, what is our ability to kind of regulate that? So let's say the facility has six spaces. Mm -hmm. You could, well, a couple of things. You could ask whoever the applicant is, again, if you decided to do it, that they would have to tell you how they're going to, how, what their ex expected traffic is going to be and how they're going to handle it. You could require valet parking. You could require off-site parking. You could, you could limit the number of people permitted inside and then ask them how they're going to stack the rest of the people who might be coming. Because I know that I've looked in, in Neptune, there, there are lines of people outside the dispensary in Neptune on a regular basis. Yes. So, there are. And security. That was always that you that's one of the things that the state has already done, but the municipality can do. They can they can require enhanced security even beyond what the state requires. It's kind of a question in a similar vein, but I, I found, you know, data online about um, you know, kind of gross sales volume for the state. Um, but do you know if there's any data out there about you know, customer volume, what the, you know, the number of transact the number of people coming in and out um, in any given day or yeah, I don't, there's no such thing, I don't think, as an average dispensary, so I think you could also, again, if you decided to do it, part of your regulation could require a traffic study by the applicant and an expectation as to what, what the volume is they expect, because, again, part of what they're going to have to tell you is if, if, it's, if you think it's worth the while of the borough, you're going to want to know how much they're planning on doing, how many sales they're expecting to make, and that'll tell you what kind of income you're expecting to get from the borough. One more on the um, on the second page. There is a section regarding um, municipalities have the ability to enact um, additional restrictions on public consumption. Okay. Where is no any? Uh, yeah, at the last meeting. Yeah, it, this is a, a attorney client privilege memo, so let's not read it out loud. But anyway, yeah, um, no, you can. You, you already have ordinances in the borough that that restrict public consumption consumption of any um, any smoking. You can't do any smoking, and you can make sure that there's no smoking permitted in any public area, and include marijuana.
Thank you, Peg. Um, I just I, I appreciate your um, the education on it. I think the biggest questions for me were the legal legal questions: what mm -hmm. the town could or could not do. Um, like I said, as of right now, we have an ordinance that prohibits, mm -hmm. uh, and it, whether we change that ordinance at any time now or ever or never, um, I think it's important that the council's up to date on where we're going, and a lot of this may adjust or change over time. Um, we have three council people that have very young children. We have one council person that this is what they do uh, on a daily basis, um, and not marijuana itself, but, <laughs> um, uh, with, with the law enforcement against drugs, um, drug use. Um, so I think it's important that we're all knowledgeable in what we're doing, so. Um, and, and let me just say this, Mayor. I understand the business end. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, there's no disrespect there. No, of course not. My, my the only point I made to Peg is that the research that I have may be different in her, and I can let her know that. That was the only point I was trying to make. Yeah. What the council decides to move forward is really a, a team decision, not a Nick decision or anything else. No, and I, and I appreciate that as well. Um, I think there are, it, it, so this is just my, this is just a Kevin opinion. Um, there are still a lot of unknowns for a small town like Lake Como. I know that what's going on if you drive by what's going on in Neptune or all these big dispensaries, you can't have a you can't have a Sears parking lot that has enough parking spaces in it for, for what they're for what they're producing. Um, so, but again, I think it's important that we all um, get the information that we have. So, thank you, Peg. I appreciate it. Um, so, if there's no other questions or comments, I'll open up the workshop to any uh, member from the public who wishes to have a question or a comment. Uh, you can come to the mic. We need name and address, please, and you can address me with your comment or your question. We'll do the best that we can. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Debbie Graham, um, 316 17th Avenue. Um, I've been down, I've been here now 20 years, which I can't believe, but yes, I've been here. And I almost, I, I can almost cry over the fact that I'm not here to uh, talk against legalization or um, uh, decriminalization, but that horse left the barn, so we're, now we're here. But I agree so strongly with Mr. DeMauro, Councilman DeMauro. My, as a, as a grandmother, whose grandchildren are moving down here with their families, uh, the effect on youth is totally overlooked and ignored, I believe. I've taught in New York City Public High School for 30 years. And believe me when I tell you that smoking marijuana has destroyed a lot of kids. And we have to get past this mindset that, well, it's only weed, you know. It's a, well, it's not the same weed that was around 40 years ago. Uh, if you read about, talk about the studies, talk about the studies that show what the THC levels are in the marijuana of today. And the, the impact on kids' health, brain development. Am I right? Thank you. And uh, anybody who thinks that uh, having a pot shop on the corner isn't desensitizing these kids to the, oh, well, you know, it's, they sell it on the corner. What's wrong with that? You know, it's just like anything else. And even if it's not, uh, if they're not accessing it illegally, it's still here. And I think that a town like this, one of the things that's best about a town like this is that we don't have to deal with that kind of a thing. And I, I'm really so unhappy with the way New Jersey is moving on this. And I would hate to see that change here. I love it that you enacted that uh, ordinance against the uh, sale of marijuana, and I hope, I pray, that it stays that way. I don't think the money is worth the future of these kids. And that's, you know, I brought you something I'm going to leave with you, because talk about the studies, okay? This so just give me that. You can go back into the mic. There's so two books you. that I re highly recommend to anyone who's interested. One is called High. It's written by David Sheff, who was a uh, New York Times reporter who wrote the book about his son's experience becoming a meth addict. The kid started out smoking weed every day, all day. You might have seen, he, he actually wrote another book called Beautiful Boy and they made a movie about it. The other book is um, Tell Your Children by Alex Berenson, also New York Times, 
uh, where he talked about studies, go read those studies, about the effects on uh, mental development in adolescence, uh, connection between psychosis and schizophrenia with prolonged use of marijuana in the young brain in particular. So I highly recommend them to you. I, the Berenson book, I will tell you this as my last, and then I'll shut up. I had a student who was doing research, and they were asked to do a paper um, comparing pros and cons of legalization of marijuana, and came into our school library to look for research. It's very hard to find this research. It's hidden. Those algorithms do a great job. However, she found all of this information about all the wonderful things, the economic <clears throat> things, you know, all of that stuff. So I helped her find, she couldn't find the other side. Okay, so I helped her do some research in some databases, found some studies, and then I gave her that book. The student changed their position <laughs> completely, having read the other side of the information, which is not as readily available as all the, the good stuff. So I'm going to leave it with you. Thank I'm going to leave it with you. You, don't, you can take it. Well, I'll get it on my own if you want. You're, but you're, you're an educator. Yep. I think you'll appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I brought them to you. Thank you. I Have a great night. Thank time. you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to comment on anything in the agenda, on the workshop agenda tonight? No. Just one thing, Mr. Dickens. Uh, Mike Ryan, 726 East Street, Lake Como. When it comes to the first thing with the gas meters and stuff, and what we found is that public safety and the safety of our residents come first. I represent the gas company. I represent the JCP&L. I represent the phone company. Four weeks ago, we had scabs in here. You remember during the summer, you saw those people sitting in little tents, splicing wires and stuff in all the street corners around town? Well, they, they came in from out of state. They weren't union members. They weren't drilled on safety and the protocols of safety. Four weeks ago, we took pictures of one of those guys up on a pole splicing wires with a steel hat on. Eight days ago, we picked up the remains of one of those employees who was a chart because he has a hat hit the wires and it fried them. Mm -hmm. We just want to make sure if those folks who are going to come in here and do these change out on these meters are bona fide employees of either the gas company, JCP&L, and whoever they represent. So we don't have incidents like that happening, and we don't have people coming in from Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and around the country to do our, our, our wiring and our projects. We should be hiring people in New Jersey who know our towns, know the business, and let them do the work. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anyone else? Hi, David Brianza, 1606 Main Street. Uh, just about the marijuana. A couple of things. I was cautioning the attorney about citing studies without naming what the studies are and you know, controlled or not, who the sponsors are. Uh, as far as we know, there's only one approved indication of the FDA for marijuana, that's what one drug. Say that again, I'm sorry. There's only one approved indication for marijuana by the FDA, no, nothing else. So it's not so legal to mention uh, benefits, medical benefits of marijuana. It's illegal, okay, without studies by the FDA. So you can't comment that. FTC has sued uh, even medical professionals for doing so. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be careful about that. Oh, and we talk about it, but it's not true, okay? Also, last year there were 593 robberies in New York City of dispensaries. In Washington State, 82 robberies of dispensaries, including two murders. That's what you're bringing when you open these things up. Because the banking laws to prevent banking, uh, those are cash businesses, you can't use banks. Uh, I have a study here, or a paper actually, from the AHA about uh, the cumulative evidence of and clinical and preclinical studies to get marijuana affecting the brain and brain health. Uh, the FDA talks about uh, the danger of cannabinoid in, in food products, edibles. It gets in there, you don't know how much, it's not regulated. So people are scared about how much is that going in, and they're, and they're selling it out there without being regulated, manufactured, processed, and the dosage. Uh, so I just warn people about all these benefits without talking about the downsides. Uh, it's a nice community. I like to keep it that way. Uh, I'm very concerned with 
the spreading of this. It's, it, it, there's unintended consequences and there's willful ignorance. And we gotta be careful about just doing it for the money without the downsides. Murders, robberies, uh, children getting it in the edibles and things like that. It is spreading in, in schools. Uh, it becomes worse and worse. I think uh, Councilman DeMora probably has data showing usage of teens has become dramatically in the last 10 years of usage of marijuana. And the more available it is, the more it's going to spread. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing none, I will close the public portion of the meeting. I want to thank everyone for their participation and their questions um, and their comments. At this time, I will call the regular meeting of the Lake Como Borough Council, Mayor and Council, to order. Please rise for a salute to the flag and a moment of silent reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection. Thank you. Sunshine Law, please. I would like to notice of this meeting the adoption of a resolution by the Mayor and Council on the third day of January, 2023, in which resolution of time, place, agenda, and regular meetings commencing on January 3rd were set forth. Notice to see was one of the Hasbro Park Press. Co-star and tap into, and a copy of the notice was posted on the borough website and on the bulletin board in Borough Hall. All meetings are open to the public. Roll call, please. Councilman Brady? Here. Skull? Here. Antoine? Here. Mora? Here. Ventrice? Here. Avala Doyle? Here. Thank you. I have a motion to accept the minutes of the February 21st meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, abstentions. One abstention, Mr. DeMora. Uh, reports of committees. Starting with Councilwoman Abella Doyle. Thank you, Mayor. Um, all matters are in order in terms of the committee, but I want to do thank the DPW and the Police Department for a fantastic and successful parade day. I think everyone had an amazing time. Uh, fantastic feedback about the parade this year. The weather held out, and it was a great day had by all. So thank you for keeping us safe to the DPW and to the Police Department. All matters are in order. Thank you. Mr. Ventris. Thank you, Mayor. All matters are in order. Thank you, Mr. DeMauro. All matters are in order, Mayor, but I do want to bring up one suggestion for next year's parade. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any way uh, to stop this, but with 175,000 people there, the kids running in the middle of the thing when cars are going by, I, I, it, sc it scared me a little bit, especially I, my, one of my staff members today said he, he got a little scared because the kids were just running in in the middle of the road. So I don't know how I don't know how you control 175,000 people, uh, but just you know made a point. Maybe Mr. Heisman, you can talk to the chief in the future and see what we can do. Are you recommending that we cancel the parade? What? <laughs> <laughs> you must know you're recommending canceling the parade. No, no. <laughs> No, I think it was fantastic. It was, it was a, I, I think know, Mr. Heisman would like you to recommend <laughs> 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 No, it, it, the parade was phenomenal. It was great, but you know, it, it, it would be you know inappropriate if we didn't look at all the things that could that could have been a disaster if some kid got run over or something. You know, we've been doing it for fifty years. I, um, you know, we could probably have a whole other workshop discussion about. <laughs> Responsibility of parents versus the responsibility of the, the township or the borough, um, but that's a different conversation for a different time. I think. Um, so, but no, I think it's a good suggestion. It's definitely something we can have a conversation about in the future. In all seriousness, Mayor, I do have a uh, post meeting uh, coming up next week, and I'll discuss it at the post meeting. Thank you, <clears throat> Councilman Dantuano. I just wanted to uh, echo Councilwoman Albala Doyle's uh, comments and thank everyone involved in the parade day for making it a success. Um, you know, the police, all borough employees, but under my DPW report, I specifically wanted to recognize and thank them for everything they did, setting up, tearing everything down, everything they did throughout the day. Um, it's a lot of fun for all the residents and for visitors, but it's a lot of work for them on a Sunday, and we really appreciate it. Other than that, all matters are in order. Yeah. Um, 
Drew, do you have um, something to add to the DPW, the water meters? Are they doing water meters? Did you say the meter reads? Uh, starting next week, yes. Okay. I know that you had mentioned something to me. I didn't know you mentioned it, Chris. So uh, I'm actually, it's going to, I just said it's going to be going on the sign uh, by the end of the day. Okay. Uh, Councilman Skull. Thank you, Mayor. All matters are in order and just going to be the third person to say thank you to DPW and um, to the police department and um, to the parade committee. It was a great year. Like Councilwoman Alvala Doyle said, the weather was wonderful. Um, thanks to the mayor and council for coming out to March. Um, yeah, thanks to everybody. Council President Whitty. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Drew, do you have any information regarding the budget and when we're going to introduce the budget? I have a meeting on Thursday with uh, uh, Ms. Allison as well as uh, Tony as well as my sponsor. Also, I'd like to get a copy before him. The budget? Yep. Please. Uh, under the 100th uh, Anniversary Committee, uh, I met with the owners of uh, Bar A, and they're, uh, we plan on having a couple of events to one of the next year, our 100th Anniversary. One would maybe be a dinner, and another one would be a family day here, somewhere, we're trying to get maybe in, in Bar A, since they're local, or Oak Tree Lodge in Wall, but we're trying to do a family day where we can have the whole, whole town get together with the kids and everything also a, uh, a dinner. Uh, Bar A is putting together some numbers for us. We have numbers from other places. And once we get the numbers from Bar A, the committee will sit down and make a determination what is best to go to. So hopefully uh, next month we'll have an answer where we're going to have some of these events. Oh yeah, that is in order. Thank you. Um, I will again Thank everyone for their uh, their work on the parade day on Sunday. Um, DPW, especially since uh, Mr. Heisman was actually not able to be in the town on Sunday because his son won the media champions for uh, high school track, which is a big event. Uh, Joshua Heisman won the uh, shot put for the state of New Jersey, oh, number one shot put in the state of New Jersey. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, unfortunately, that event was on Sunday, and he was he had to be in Staten Island instead of being in Belmar, which you know drove him nuts. Um, <laughs> should have taken me, Drew. But it was a great day. There was a it was the biggest parade I think that I was <clears throat> part of in this town, if not ever in a very long time. It was a great day. Thank you very much. Um, we have there's one thing that I want to talk about. We received a report through social media last week. Um, and, I, and I stress that it was through social media and, and nobody ever really reported it to the town um, that one of the lights on our flagpole on New Bedford Road was out. Um, and we take things like that pretty seriously and I think it's important uh, for people to know that if, if there is a flag, um, if there is a light on the flagpole or any other issue throughout the town, it is very important to contact the borough. Um, we have a phone number. Uh, we can address situations pretty quickly if we're informed of them. Um, if they have to go through several levels of social media and opinion and um, um, excuses or whatever, it takes a little while to get that done. So um, the light went out on the flagpole on New Bedford Road. When we were made aware of it, we removed the flag until we could get the light fixed. We put the flag back up, put the new light up. And then in the storm on Friday morning, the light on the flagpole at the lake went, went down. Um, so we knew that happened. Uh, we were able to take the flag down until we get that light replaced on the flagpole. I don't want people to think that we're moving lights from one flagpole to another <laughs> to accommodate things that are being said on social media. So I just wanted to clear that up. Um, along with the budget, we just received numbers from the state for um, for school funding for Lake Como. Uh, this year again, we are being reduced in the amount of state aid that we are receiving from the state for, uh, for our school funding. Uh, we are being reduced about 22% of the aid that we have gotten in the past, which equals about $86,000 for the town, uh, for the borough. Now that's not as much money as some other towns, but it is 22% of the aid that we have received. Uh, in speaking with our administrator, our um, Board of Education administrator, um, Mr. Bardsley, 
He was expecting a reduction in our state aid. He was actually expecting more of a reduction in our state aid. So he's actually pleasantly surprised that we only reduced uh, that amount. But uh, those numbers, along with our budget numbers and BOE numbers, and now that everything from the state is getting done, we'll able to, we're, we're able to finish up with our budgets and our school budgets uh, moving forward. So thank, every, thank you, everyone, for their diligence. And those numbers will be coming out soon. Um, that's all I have, I believe. That's all I have. So thank you very much. Um, at this time, I will open, I'll take a motion to open for public comments on new business and consent agenda. So Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone wishing to comment on anything listed under our consent agenda or new business? You can come to the mic and do so now. Seeing none, I'll take a motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Can I have a motion to approve the items under the consent agenda? So offered. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Member Witte? Yes. Skull? Yes. Antoine? Yes. Tamora? Yes. Andres? Yes. Abalago? Yes. Thank you. Under new business, we have a special events application. Uh, Team Hope 5K, do we have anyone here representing this organization? Can you please come to the mic? Sure. And um, give us your name and address, please. Uh, Jim Giardino, uh, 20 Sherman Avenue in West Long Branch. Okay. Can you just give us a little bit of a background on the event that you're asking for the special events permit for? Uh, yeah, it's a fundraiser for the Huntington Disease Association of America. Um, we've been doing it for a number of years now. We've started, I think it started up in, uh, in Edison just before I joined the, uh, the committee. Um, for over 10 to 15 years, and then we started down here about six or seven years ago. Um, thank you all for allowing us to be a part of the community and, and using the streets to, to do the 5K run. Um, we missed the last two years. Well, last year we had our first one back. The two years prior to that, we, we did not have it because of COVID. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a boutique disease, um, and it's because it's not very many people in, in the United States have it. It's about 8,000 people in New Jersey, uh, which is not a lot in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> and it's, uh, it's raising money for Huntington disease, which is basically um, you take Parkinson's disease, you take Alzheimer's, and you take ALS, and you put it into one, and that's Huntington. So uh, <sighs> my wife has it, and she's in the end stages of it. We're sorry to hear that, um, and you know I don't know any questions that I have are, are going to pale in comparison to, to, to your conversation. But um, as the, the couple of questions that I have on the events application sure. itself, uh, it says that the events will start at 7:30. Yeah, we get there at 7:30 to, to set up and get ready for the run that's, that starts at nine. The run will start at nine. Okay, yeah. and uh, usually it, it'll end by 10, a little after 10. Uh, but we've run the we've run the uh, the the trail and where it's going to go. We make sure we have people, volunteers throughout the uh, throughout the run, uh, directional, basically telling where people are where to run, and uh, and that's uh, again by by ten ten thirty we're we're wrapped up and done. Right, it's the traditional five k race yeah. through Lake Como, right? And um, I think we've made some adjustments over the years that I think benefit the residents of the town as well. You know the walkers usually hit the 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 sidewalks at the end, so we're not okay. locking up. I mean, and I know that the police go through that with all of the, the yeah. people running the race. Every logistics person, yeah. Um, any questions? All right. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Can I have a motion to approve the application? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Council Member Witte. Yes. Skull. Yes. Antonio. Yes. Memorial. Yes. Andres. Yes. Yes. Thank you. The application is accepted. Thank you, Mr. Constantino. Good luck. We have Ordinance 2023-02 offered by Councilman Ventries. Thank you, Mayor. So offered Ordinance number 2023-2, uh, Ordinance amending Ordinance 10-4.8 uh, and 10.4.9 of the Borough of Lee's Homo Tree Replacement Plan. Uh, this ordinance would increase the required number of trees. Uh, 
or the uh, amount that has to be deposited into the tree replacement fund for uh, larger trees that are being removed uh, during construction. Thank you. This is a uh, second reading in public hearing. Anyone? Uh, I'll take a second first. Second. Um, anyone wishing to speak to this ordinance uh, in particular can come to the mic and do so now. Seeing none, um, I will take a roll call, please. Councilor Yes. Carl? Yes. 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 Resolution 2023 46 offered by Councilman Witte. Sold resolution 2023 46, a resolution of the Mayor and Council of Beverly Como authorizing the sale of surplus personal property no longer needed for public use on an online auction website. We're auctioning off a 2006 GMC box truck. Um, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions? <coughs> Roll call, please. Yes. Scott? Yes. 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 Resolution 2023-47 offered by Councilman D'Antuano. Thank you, Mayor. Sole offered resolution 2023-47 be resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Lake Como that the proper officers be directed and authorized to make payment from the following accounts. From the current account, $81,068.44. From the water and sewer account, $119,186.27. From the tourism account, $968.61, and from the dog license account, $2.40, for a total of $201,225.72. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Yes. Skull? Yes. 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 Be resolved by the mayor and council of the borough of Lake Como that the proper officers be directed and authorized to make payment from the following account. Current account, New Jersey Natural Gas Company, $1,101.28. That big, that unusually high? One on the the, the, the gas bill? I'm not, I'm not saying you're lying, but I'm just saying, is that, is that accurate? I'm not to double check that. I don't have the bills right now. Is it for a month? Is it for a I know we month? had a recent problem down at the first aid building. Uh, oh, right, okay. No, I remember at that. The, at the first aid building on 18th Avenue. So uh, we had to shut down the heat there because uh, there were some component issues. So that, yeah, it's, that's what it's listed on the bill list, so it looks accurate. Okay. Um, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Witte? Yes. Skull? Yes. Antoine? Abstain? Amora? Yes. Ventures? Yes. Avalador? Yes. Thank you. Um, can I have a motion to open for public comments, please? So moved. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone wishing to come to the mic um, for public comments or questions can do so at this time on anything. Mike Ryan, 7206 East Street, Lake Como. As your representative to the Craig Committee, I want to come and say thank you very much to everybody. Drew's crew, the office staff, all the council members, you look great in your sashes walking down Main Street, <laughs> Peggy. Uh, the 50th anniversary parade is uh, Mayor Higgins eloquently pointed out the fish breakfast on Saturday was in Lake Como we celebrated the 50th annual St. Patrick's Day parade, but once you cross 16th Avenue you started to celebrate the 49th annual St. Patrick's Day parade because Bill Moore did not have a parade. <laughs> And I would just have to say that, Drew, good luck with your meeting with Chip and the wrap-up meeting with the safety and all of that. We have already had some discussions of what we see, uh, but it's basically those people not following the rules and how do you, you know, how that goes and how do you tidy that up. But when you think about New York's parade, 262,000 marchers, four and a half hours to go four miles. 
It's never been canceled in wind, snow, rain, sleet, whatever. And then we have our parade that's sustained for 50 years with 110 groups in the parade, 30 marching bands, and 6,000 marchers, and 175,000 people. That's a lot for two little small towns to withstand, and you do it well. And from having the Irish flag that Kevin made available, the yard out in front that was flown in a week before from Ireland, because somebody on the committee was from Ireland, had family, we were able to get that flag. But it's something that we should be proud of being here at the Irish Riviera. It started with the, the dinner, which you guys all went to, which we were very happy to have you there. The proclamations that the mayor and council made and presented at the various functions. But it was a great event. Chip did a great job. Uh, you know, we couldn't have anybody better to represent us. And he will continue to represent us because as the Grand Marshal, he will be marching in the Asbury Park Parade, the Perth Amboy Parade, and there's 26 parades in New Jersey now. And everybody is vying for all those bands and those different groups to show up. And we have to compete now with East Rutherford because they started a parade on the same day as us. So I think overall we had great weather. We had the state troopers out there. We had the helicopters. We had all the, the toys that we needed. Plus, we had both political parties come together as, you know, good buddies and friends, and we all mar marched together. When I got to Mr. Allison's house and I saw Nekono Scanlon hugging, hugging Jim McGreevy, I thought, this is really what it's all about. Politics aside, it's great to celebrate the Irish, you know, patron saint, St. Patrick. But thank you very much, and I hope you're there for us again next year. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Mike. Seeing no one else, I'll take a motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next meeting. Next regular meeting of the Mayor and Council will be held on Tuesday, March 26th, immediately following the seventh and eighth meeting of the meeting in the Lake Homo meeting room. All meetings are in the toilet. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.